Introduction to Microsoft Outlook 2013 Microsoft Outlook 2013 is the email client and personal information organizer that comes with the Microsoft Office suite. Outlook 2013 is used by businesses, freelancers and home users to check, sort and organize emails. However, that is only the start of what you can do with Outlook. You can also set and delegate tasks, schedule meetings and appointments, add contacts, connect to social media and much more. It's important to recognize that Outlook 2013 is downloaded and installed on your computer. Therefore, it's a program you can open and use just like Microsoft Word or Excel. You don't need to be on the internet to use Outlook 2013, nor do you need an internet browser open to launch it. The only thing you need is an internet connection if you want to send or receive emails. With the launch of Office 2013, Microsoft made changes in how it sells its most popular software package. Of course, you can download a free trial by simply going to the Microsoft Office page, picking out what version you want to try, and then downloading the software. You don't need a credit card to try this software. If you want to purchase the software, Microsoft now gives you two choices. As always, you can buy the software, either online or from most Office supply and computer stores. The prices to buy the software vary depending on what version you want to purchase. There are three versions, Home and Student, Home and Business, and Professional. As with other versions of Office, it's a one-time charge and the software is yours to use as long as you wish. Office 2013 also comes with Office 365, which is another method that you can use to buy the Office suite of software. With Office 365, you subscribe to the software instead of purchasing it as you've done in the past. You can pay for your subscription by the month or yearly on the Microsoft website. The price of your subscription will be determined by the version you want, home, small business, or mid-sized business. Once you purchase a subscription, you'll be able to download Office 2013 on your computer just as you would as if you bought the software in the store. As part of Office 365, the subscription also includes multiple licenses, which will give you the ability to install the software on other computers as well. This is a perk that doesn't come with buying the software in store. For the home version, you get up to 5 licenses for 5 devices. The small business version comes with licenses for up to 25 users and the mid-sized business version provides for up to 300 users. There's also an enterprise version for larger companies that offer unlimited users. Once you subscribe to Office 365, you'll never have to worry about purchasing a new version of Office ever again. When a new version comes out, your software will be updated for you. Outlook 2013 is arguably the best version of Outlook yet. It contains the same great features that you loved in past versions that have been fine-tuned and improved for better usability. In addition, it contains some great new features that make Outlook even more useful and functional than ever before. Here are the improvements and changes that you can look forward to seeing as you go through the course. The attachment reminder lets you know if an attachment was omitted from the email. How many times have you sent an email and forgot to attach something? Outlook 2013 helps to remind you. The People Hub is now where you view your contacts. It includes the profiles of your contacts and can even include contacts from social networks. Best yet, it now combines the information from one person that's listed multiple times as a contact in one contact card. For example, if John Doe is an Outlook contact, but is also linked to you by Facebook and LinkedIn, he will now only have one contact card instead of three. The weather forecast is now displayed in Outlook. You can see the weather forecast for the next three days in the calendar module. You can preview messages in the messages list. You can now reply to emails right in the reading pane. You can also start a link IM conversation and enjoy a real-time chat. Take a look at your calendar to see your schedule or look at a contact's details without having to switch from the email module to the calendar. And much more. There's been some amount of confusion since the release of Outlook 2013 and the creation of Outlook.com. Are the two related? Do they work together, automatically syncing messages from Outlook 2013 to Outlook? Before we go any further, let's answer these questions and clear up this confusion. Outlook.com is a free web-based email service. If you've ever used Gmail, then you already pretty much know what Outlook.com is. You can get an email address and use Outlook.com to send and receive emails through its browser-based program. However, Outlook.com will have a link to Outlook 2013 data only if you use Microsoft Exchange, which is another service offered by Microsoft. There is support added in for your Outlook 2013 contacts and calendar. Outlook.com is not Outlook 2013. Outlook 2013 is a software program that you must download to your computer. Outlook.com is a free web-based email solution that actually replaced Hotmail. 
You can use Outlook.com to check email for nearly any email account that you have. You can even create an Outlook.com email address. You can sync your Outlook 2013 information to Outlook.com, but only if you use the Microsoft Exchange service that I mentioned before. You can access Outlook.com from any web browser as long as you have an internet connection. To set up an Outlook.com account, go to www.outlook.com. Click the Sign Up Now link at the bottom of the page. If you have a Microsoft Live, Windows Phone or Xbox Live account, you can simply log in without creating an account. If this is the first time starting Outlook 2013, the first thing you're going to see when you open the program is this wizard. This wizard will guide you through all the information you need to configure Outlook to send and receive your emails. This is the first window you'll see. Simply click Next and this next message will appear. In this window, Outlook asks you if you want to connect to an email account. Select Yes if you want to be able to use Outlook to send and receive email, then click Next. In this screen, you'll see that the next thing that Outlook is going to ask you for is your name, as you want it to appear in the subject line of an email, your email address, and the password that is given to you by your internet service provider for your email. You can also choose if you want to manually configure the setup or add additional server types. If you're not using a Microsoft Live account to log into Outlook, you might need to manually configure your settings by using the settings your ISP or email provider gave you. If this is the case, check the box to manually configure the settings, as shown here. If you're on the next window, you can click back to return to this window here. Once your account is set up, you'll get this screen here, which you can then click finish. If you wanted to enter an email address that isn't a Microsoft Live account, you can do it on this screen and then manually set up this account type. Click Manual Setup and then click Next. Choose a service you want to connect to in order to check email. We're going to choose POP or IMAP. Now enter the information given to you by your ISP or email provider. If you want to test the account settings to make sure they work, you can do that on the right by clicking the Test Account Settings button. Click Next when you're finished. The test window will appear as Outlook attempts to send and receive emails using the configurations you entered in the previous window.